He might have to re-recruit him. He um, has not decided to enter the transfer portal, my child, so that's a good thing. Because um, I've already put in a deposit on the tuition, so that would be bad. Um, but where was I going? Okay, so um, Dennis rose to the top. He earned it. When I was looking at the candidate profile, high character, I like selfless, smart, hard workers, someone who has turned a program around, someone who's a proven winner, someone who has an edge, someone who has a competitive drive and just a relentless devotion to the game of basketball. Someone who is going to be so passionate to not only recruit, but to bring people back, bring people together. I think that was really important. This is, I mean, this is the SEC. Obviously, wins are, we want to cut down nets. It was very clear. We share that same goal. We want to cut down those nets. But you know what? We also want to graduate young people. We want them to have a pathway to a meaningful career. And Dennis had all that. And I, when I was looking at this coach, I was looking for someone that I was going to trust my own child, but also 15 other parents' children. And someone who was going to recruit to the level to be successful in the Southeastern Conference. And I had all faith and confidence that Dennis was that guy. I know it's never an easy decision. What did you identify that was lacking in the program that you think now maybe can be that, that led you to that? We did a holistic evaluation of the program. And what Dennis brings is this, recruit, this track record of recruiting success. He turns around programs. He is a relentless competitor. And he has that... It's okay. <laughs> Do you mean to hold that for you? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and he has this incredible just drive. And he, he connects with people in a way. And I knew he was a great evaluator of talent, but he connects with people that's something really special. I mean, we're about to go out in a caravan, and I think we're going to hit like 34 spots in the next, say, 60 days, give or take a few. And I was when I was speaking with Dennis throughout this process, I just kept thinking, man, I can see him connecting with our fan base and bringing people back because that's what it's about. It's about being together, and we need to bring people home. Professor, you mentioned the rebuilding job that Dennis did at Cleveland State. What in particular, when you were talking to people and just looking into that, stood out to you the most about how he was able to rebuild that and the way he went about doing that that you wanted here? He took a program that didn't necessarily have traditional resources. He got hired really, really late, and you heard him talk about, you know, they didn't really have a staff, they only had three or four student athletes, and he turned them into a champion, right? They went to the NCAA tournament, they went to the NIT, he was two-time coach of the year, so I knew he was respected by his colleagues, and I, I really, I love the way that he built it. I knew he was a great recruiter, but I also knew he was able to turn around a program. And we had more statistics. I've looked at more offensive, defensive efficiency, points per game. I've looked at assist turnover mark. And uh, Brad Luce was really helpful in that. We have more basketball analytics than you can possibly think of. But also that, that analytics piece, he plays an innovative, modernized game of basketball. I, we wanted someone who wanted to embrace analytics, right? Innovation is one of our core values in the athletic department, and that was important for us. Who plays, who plays a fun brand of basketball, but is going to use modern techniques and analytics to be able to get the job done? So, Desiree, thank how you. much do you think, sorry, um, how much do you think that, it's sort of the question I asked him about the sense of his ability to navigate flux was meaningful in your evaluation of him? I mean, it seems like there's been a lot going on changes in the game, et cetera. I mean, the, the loose factor in here? Absolutely. He's, I mean, he's really smart. I, and I think you can't go wrong with, very, with smart coaches who have that relentless drive and that competitive edge. He uses analytics. He's always evaluating not just the college game, but the NBA, because he knows that future, our student athletes, that's where their aspirations lie. They want to be future NBA players. And so he's able to really adjust um, adjust to the changes of circumstances and really kind of skate to where the puck is. That was something I was really, I was really impressed with. Yeah, that's okay. interesting. Thanks. Desiree, and one thing that he did point out is just protecting the hearts of his students, student athletes during this time. Um, what was your message to them initially and then bringing him in, just making them the most comfortable? Yes, we're going to hit your head on that. Right here. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, what was the message to the, my student athletes? Yeah, just yes. in this transitioning time. Yes. So what we did, I'm, I, uh, we had our first meeting after we made the transition with all the student athletes, and then I called every single one uh, that night, and I talked to them about it. And you know, transition is hard. 
they are incredibly resilient. But I also asked them, I said, what are you looking for in your next head coach? What's important to you? And I had so many of them, and I talked to them today, so many of them telling Mrs. Francois, what we're really looking for is someone who's not going to be just see me as a number, someone who's going to see me as a person, someone who's going to make me a better man, someone who's going to make me a better leader, and someone who's going to probably make me an NBA player. And so when I talked to them, and then we had continuous conversations, our staff did a great job of making sure that they reached out to those student athletes throughout these this past eight, eight, ten days. And then this morning, when we had our team meeting, what I told them was, I heard you, I listened to you. When we were developing that candidate profile, I had my list of requirements that I was looking for, but I heard you too. And in Dennis Gates, we have someone that's going to care about you as an individual. So, Greg, thank you. Greg, the, uh, oh, the, I'm so sorry. The pressure is going to be to win now. What, what do you see in Dennis Gates that you feel like he can have a chance to win pretty quickly like he did at Cleveland State? Well, so in terms of, so I've been doing this a long time, right? And you have to you have to put the roots before the tree can build the fruit or bear the fruit and that's what he's doing he is going at he's been out there recruiting and looking at the landscape and it starts with our, with great student athletes um, it starts with building that culture we have to provide excellence around him everything from our nutrition everything from our player development state spaces everything from that staff so he has a lot of building Still to do, um, but I have great confidence that he's going to be able to make that to make that flip, that switch, if you will. And we're but we're not building it just for the short term. We're building it. We were intentional in this building about having this press conference here because you know what? This is where championships are made. Championships are made in this practice arena. And also, if you look around this this room and you see all these incredible banners, right? I wanted us to have that visual of bringing that past and that past tradition of excellence and building it and, uh, oh, I'm so sorry, and coupling it towards the future. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.